Let's have a look at the VCO6 multi-output oscillator from Sweeman. So I'm going to take the CV output from my MIDI to CV converter and plug that into the FM2 input here. FM1 works in linear mode, so that's not going to work for us. FM2 and FM3 inputs are calibrated for a 1 volt per octave sensitivity, so that would be the better option here. You also get three attenuators for the three FM inputs. All right, continuing with the patch, I'm going to take the gate output from my MIDI to CV converter and plug that into the gate input on this ADSR envelope. I'll take the sine wave output from the VCO6 and plug that into the VCA input over here. Next, I'll take the ADSR output and plug that into the CV in on the VCA. I'll push up the CV in control to about halfway and make sure the gain is all the way down. And finally, I'll take the output on the VCA and plug that in to the audio out. So now when I play a note, a sine wave is being generated. There's a range control to set the octave. There's also a fine tune control, which has a range of plus or minus six semitones. The oscillator can also be switched to LFO rate, but it's too low to be used as an audible oscillator. I'll switch back to audio rate. But essentially this VCO can also be used as an LFO. All right, so now I'm sending a sequence to the VCO, but we're not hearing any pitch change. That's because the FM2 input attenuator is all the way down. If you want a full one volt per octave response, you want to crank that dial all the way up to the maximum. All right, so that's the sine wave. Let's switch to the next one, which is a triangle. The next shape is a sawtooth. The next is a sawtooth again. The difference between the two sawtooths won't be obvious right off the bat. We'll get back to that later. Let's switch to the next shape, which is a pulse or square over here. And the last output is another pulse, which is also set to a square right now. All right, let's switch back to that second sawtooth. This is actually a dual sawtooth, and you can adjust the pitch difference between the two sawtooth shapes with the pulse width control. Now the pulse width control affects the two pulse shapes, but it also affects the sawtooth shape. Let's see how that works. I'll stop the sequence, just play a note and change that pulse width dial. And you can hear and see the pitch difference between the two saw waveforms. So that's the dual saw waveform with detune on the pulse width control. Let's switch to the actual pulse shape. So right now it's a square, but if we change the pulse width, you can see and hear the pulse width is changing. At maximum pulse width, the sound almost completely disappears. Now this pulse width modulation is symmetrical, as you can see, unlike your classic analog asymmetrical pulse width modulation. Let's switch over to that last pulse shape. This is a square right now, but its pulse can also be modulated with the pulse width dial. At maximum, you get a pretty usable thin pulse. Let's switch over to the other pulse. So there's a subtle difference between the two pulses. So you can always pick which one suits you better. All right, so now let's check out some of the modulation options over here. Right now we're using FM2 as our one volt per octave exponential FM, but there's also FM3, which also gives us exponential frequency modulation. 
So let's take an LFO output, let's say a triangle output from here, and plug that into the FM3 input on the VCO6. So right now when I play a note, we don't hear any further pitch modulation via FM3 because there's an attenuator which is all the way down for it. If I bring that up gradually, now you start to hear the slow pitch modulation. If I speed up the LFO, you can hear the change in modulation. If I further increase this attenuator, you hear a wider modulation range, and at maximum, it's the widest. If I speed up that LFO, and now we get that classic exponential FM tone. Let's set this up so it sounds a bit more like vibrato. So you want the LFO to be at about 6 or 7 hertz, and the modulation depth very very low. Alright, now let's check out FM1, which is set to a linear response. So this is the exponential response right now with FM3. If I switch this LFO to FM1, and increase that attenuator, you can hear that that triangle shape no longer sounds like a triangle. This is because we are in AC coupled mode right now, which is not ideal for low frequency modulation. This mode works better for audio rate modulation. Let's try switching the mode to DC coupled. Now we're getting back the triangle shaped LFO. And in this DC mode, nothing is being high pass filtered, so an LFO works fine for modulation. We could use this mode to create the classic vibrato effect, but that modulation is not going to be consistent across the entire audible range. Now going back to AC mode, this is more useful when you're doing audio rate modulation as it will filter out any DC offsets in the signal. Filtering out the DC offset in the signal will ensure that the perceived pitch remains pretty consistent across the audible range. Switching to DC mode. You can clearly hear that in DC mode, the perceived pitch does change. But of course, if the modulation was a true LFO, meaning it was a low frequency oscillator, then DC mode would be a better option. Next, let's check out the pulse width modulation inputs. Let's listen to the dual sawtooth output. Now let's say I want to modulate that with an LFO signal. So I'll take the triangle output out of this LFO and plug that into the pulse width modulation 1 input here. So obviously this is not pulse width modulation, but modulation of the pitch difference between the two sawtooths. There's the pulse width modulation 1 attenuator. Let's try this with the pulse shape. And now we get true pulse width modulation. If we were using the second pulse output, that first dial will not work. We have another dial here for pulse width modulation too. It still doesn't work because it actually has a separate input. So we need to plug into pulse width modulation 2 in here. And now we get that pulse width modulation. Alright, so now the last option here is sync. So we can sleeve the VCO6 to any other oscillator. So let's say I'll take the sine output out of this oscillator and plug it into the sync input. So now the VCO6 is slaved to the Z3000. Let's start the sequence. Now ideally your master oscillator needs to be lower than the slaved oscillator. 
So I'm just going to quickly adjust this. So now you can hear the pitch does not change, but the timbre is changing. If I disconnect the 1 volt per octave FM control and plug it into the master oscillator, we can hear the VCO6 is following along because it's slaved to the Z3000. It's going to be more interesting now to modulate the pitch of this oscillator. So I'll take an LFO output, specifically a triangle LFO output, and plug that into the frequency modulation input here. Let's use it in DC mode. And now you can hear how the timbre is gradually changing at the rate of the LFO. Which is quite interesting because we're not modulating pitch here, we're actually modulating the frequency of this slaved oscillator. If I was to change the frequency of the master oscillator, you can hear the slave oscillator also follows along and the pitch changes. Let's hear a single note. So that's a pulse shape with pitch modulation being slaved to the Z3000. Let's try the other pulse. The sawtooth, dual sawtooth specifically. The regular sawtooth. The triangle. And lastly, the sign. With sync, you always get best results with harmonically rich waveforms. So that's the VCO6 from Sweeman. I hope you found this video helpful, and please stay tuned for more.